but you're about to see a passionate, dedicated and trained people practicing and preparing to enter an extreme sporting event that may change their lives. Do not try this on your own without necessary experience and supervision. Breathe in, breathe out, this moment's what it's all about. Born to be great, your gold awaits, don't hesitate. Accelerate! Set for the race, aim to give it all I got. Mind is set, gonna reach the high spot. Working hard in order to fulfill my goal. Nothing can stop me from getting what I'm going for. Let's be great, I was working to the same. So I won't hesitate, gotta get to first place. Hands on the golden plate. I concentrate, won't hit the brake, just move forward, accelerate. Welcome back, guys. This is Accelerate. Last week, we met two new extreme athletes as they showed us what it takes to prepare for their major sporting events. We met 13-year-old karate champion, Chloe, as she prepares for an inter-school karate championship being held in Gauteng. Will she have the perseverance to take on her opponents and claim the gold? We'll find out later. We also met 19-year-old apprentice, Jackie Shadley who is well on his way to obtaining his professional jockey license and has managed to secure himself five rides for his next race. Will he be able to gallop the track and come out tops? We're about to find out. Today is race day. I'm racing at Kenilworth Racecourse and I managed to secure myself with five horses by five different trainers and that means I'm racing in five races today. How my day starts is that I get up very early at about 5am in the morning. I get myself ready for the day. I pack my clothes and then my riding master and I drive to the training stables to get the horses ready for race day. Um, I'm going to be training the horses, like exercising and working them. I'll be getting instructions from my trainer and she'll be telling me what to do with them. Okay guys, take these two nice babies, but I think this one here starts half a length behind, so you take this one, half a length behind, okay? But he seems like he's quite strong. And just do the same thing you did with those last two babies. After the training session with the horses, we go back to the academy and do chores like cleaning the van for race day. The reason why we wash the bus is so that it looks clean when we go to races. You don't want to get to races with a dirty bus. It looks unprofessional. I'm actually very excited because I have quite good rides. I'm expecting big things. Dufflin horses carry Dufflin weights, so it just gives um, the weaker horses an advantage with carrying a lower weight. Because if you have a good horse, it will be carrying a heavier weight, so that the lighter horse, the horses that are carrying lighter weights, has a bit of a better chance just to even things up. My weight myself is quite light. I weigh 50. But the horses that I'm riding today are carrying 52. So I have to just add a bit of extra weight. Meaning with my saddles and everything. At the moment, my weight is quite good. But when I'm a jockey, I'm hoping to maintain my weight 51, 52 throughout my career. Afterwards, we pack our gear and make our way to the course. And this is uh, my girth and sir single. Uh, so when you jump onto the horse, just, make, um, just keep the, the saddle attached to the horse itself so that you don't lose any balance and it doesn't slip backwards. These are sponges, uh, just when the horse sweats and that, that also just helps to keep the saddle together. My body vest, uh, it's for protection if I have to fall or anything like that. I don't damage my spine or my back. These are my bridges, the things I wear on my back. Oh. Okay, that's it and I'm ready for race time. So today I'll be racing at Kenworth Racecourse. The first thing we have to do is get changed into our colours and then we get weight. Basically how the, the, the weight system works with, with horses on race day, if you open the race card and you'll see um, a horse carrying 60 kilograms on his back. Um, 
basically, you know, the jockey has to be slightly less than the 60. So it's, it's the jockey's weight plus the saddle is, is the, the joint weight to make up the 60 kilograms. So when you weigh, it, when you weigh out on, the, on a race day and you go to the scale, you weigh out on 60 kilograms, you go ride your race and when you come back from the race, you re-weigh in and then recheck your weight when you come back from the race and it has to be 60 kilograms. If it's less or it's more, you might have a problem and again, the, the stop here and you still ask questions. Why are you too heavy when you come back or why are you too late? There are questions asked. After the break, we'll find out if Shadley's preparations have paid off. In the meantime, check out our Facebook page for some more extreme action. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Accelerators. We are saddling it up with Apprentice Sharky Shadley as he's about to race five horses at the Candleworth race course. Can he gallop his way to a successful place? Let's find out. For my first race, I had to fill in for someone. I was asked to ride the horse Aloxy. This was good because it will give me some good practice for my other four races to come. In my first race, I rode very well and I managed to get a place, which was fourth. The reason why it was good to get a place is because it gives the owners and the trainers an idea of how the horse is improving. I get weighed after the race. I make my way back to the change room to change into my new racing colours. This time I'm wearing green racing colours with black arm straps. After the good result, I'm feeling a lot more confident about this next race. The horse's name is Radio Dream. At the gates I'm placed first. This is an advantage to me because I won't have to use too much of the horse's energy at the start of the race. Unfortunately, I didn't take advantage of my good position on the grid. I did push Rodeo, but he lost speed on the straight, so I only came sixth. This means I didn't place anywhere in the top four. I'm disappointed in the way the horse ran, because it was a good opportunity for me to get a win or a place. But at least I got a good feel for the track, and I'm confident I can do better in the next race. After the race, I check my results and get weighed again and make my way back to the changing rooms and get ready for the next race. My next race, I'm wearing white and blue racing colors with a blue helmet. My riding master, Mr. Walsh, gives me some good advice because he saw where I finished in the last race and he feels I can do better. The horse I'm riding now is Cigar Boy. The assistant trainer shows me to him, she helps me mount him and gives me some last minute pointers on how to ride him. It's not a lot of pressure riding someone else's horse because I've established a relationship with each trainer. When I get on any horse, I always give it my best. When I get to the corner and I'm about to eat the straight, I push the garbo as much as I can. And when I get to the 200 meter mark, I'm in fifth position and Cigar Boy gets a second wind and manages to steal two places. I was very lucky to come third. I'm happy about this placing. It's my second place of the day. I have two more races to go. 
I make my way back to the parade area and hand off the cowboy to the horse handlers. I'm very happy with myself and the trainer is very impressed with me. Every place I get is very important to me in my apprenticeship career. I make my way back to get weighed. and get ready to train for my second last race. This time I'm wearing green with red and blue arm stripes. I meet up with the owners and I have a quick chat with them. Mr. Wells then gives me some good important tips for my fourth race. I make my way back to the track. This time I'm riding the horse, Sun at Midnight. This race is a sprint race, which means it's a shorter race and I have to move the starting gates closer to the finish. I pushed Sun at Midnight to its limits and on the final stretch I managed to successfully place third which I'm very happy with because it means I've now gotten three places for the day. I meet up with the owners and they thank me for a good race. I get weighed and changed once again for my final race of the day. For my last race I'm wearing red facing colours with white in the middle and black on the arms. This horse's name is Pagola. This is my last race of the day, to get a crucial place or a winner and to improve my racing record. This race is another sprint race. When the race starts, I'm not able to get Pagolia to sprint at full pace and as a result I fall way back. The reason why Pagolia didn't run a good race was because it was its first time at the race course, but it gained valuable experience today and I'm sure in the future there's definite podium finishes coming out of this horse. So after coming dead last, I felt a bit disappointed because I didn't expect to come last. But looking back at the day, I'm happy that I got at least three places out of my five races today. And that's not bad at all. So that's another end of the day of racing for me, that's all. The next step in my career as a jockey is to qualify from the South African Jockey Academy and to pursue my career as a professional jockey. So after a long day at the race course, Shadley has secured himself three crucial places out of five grueling races for the day. These results will help him in his future career when he soon becomes a professional jockey. Keep riding on Shadley, the race course is where you belong. Up next, we're going to see if Chloe can maintain her focus and grab that all-important gold medal for her event. Let's check it out. Today is a competition day. I'm competing in the Interschool Championship in Gauteng. How I typically start my event day is I get up very early at about 6 a.m. I get my gear ready, which consists of my gear, my foot pads, shin pads, and my gloves. And then my mom helps me out with my hair. It is important that it is tied back so that it doesn't interfere with my fights. My mom makes sure that I have everything else ready and that my gear is neat and tidy. It's important to have a neat and tidy gear for the judges. My mom also makes sure that I have breakfast. This is also important to keep up my strength for the day. When I'm ready, my mom and I make our way to the venue. I'm feeling nervous about the day. I want to get double gold for both Kata and Kumite. My senses put a lot of pressure on me to win. But because of my training and my commitment to the sport, I've gotten used to it and I have become a lot more confident on these event days. Still, I'm nervous because anything can happen. I could make a mistake. I could slip and fall. I could land an illegal blow by accident. So many things can happen. I make my way into the venue with my new city gear. I sit with my mom and I look on to the other fights that are going on. Both my senses are here. They also have other kids that they train and have to oversee their fights and katas. My age group is only at the end of the day, so I have to wait it out. This can be a bit nerve wracking waiting so long, but in the meantime, I find an area in the venue where I can practice my kata and do warm ups. 
My competition today consists of one kata which I have to perform for the judges as well as three rounds of kumite. Before my kata, I watch the other karatikas perform their routine. I'm nervous but also confident. I've memorized my routine well and I'm sure I'm going to do well. My mom watches on. She is just as nervous. I make my way onto the mat, also known as a tatami. I bow to the judges. The judges are looking for expression, posture, movement, composure. The block and the low blow, I do it four times in my kata. So when I, when I do the movements, my face is serious. So during the kata, you mustn't show any emotion. Kata contains a lot of repetition. The reason for this is to know how to effectively execute your moves on your left side and your right side. The next part of my form, I do the shikudashi, where I also do vigorous punches. Then next, I block down where a kick is coming towards me. And then a block towards the face. And then I do a kick to the opponent. The next is I do a rounders kick and a kick to the stomach. I ended off strongly with a back first punch. When my routine is complete, I bow to the judges and make my way off the tatami. My sensei congratulates me and gives me some words of encouragement. I feel I did very well in my kata. After the break, we'll continue with Chloe. In the meantime, like us on our Facebook page and tell us about the extreme sports that you do. Welcome back to Accelerate. We are kicking it up with 13-year-old karate champion Chloe. She's competing in an inter-school karate championship. She's aiming to get double gold in a kata and three kumite rounds. Remember guys, karate is an artful combat sport focused on respect for oneself and others. One should never attack in anger. Will she achieve her goal? We're about to find out. I get ready for my next round, which is my first kumite round. The judges are looking for clean points and targets. Each round consists of a 90 second bout. So I make my way onto the mat, also known as a tatami, and I bow to my opponent and to the ring. I greet my opponent, and as we begin to fight, I go deal with my kids. I reset the bout. I bow to the referee again and immediately I do a combination of punches and kicks. While I was attacking, I landed awkwardly in one of my kicks. I raised my hand to stop the bout, and I felt a sharp pain in my knee. But I felt that I could continue, and I walked it off and continued with my round. I gave her a kick, and I received three points from the judges. After I receive the points, we bow again and continue with the bout. I started to throw some kicks again. And I gave a kick and won her round. After the first round, I bow to the judges and then my opponent. As I came off the tatami, my knees started to bang. 
My sensei does everything she can to make me feel better. I make my way to the tatami. I'm feeling a bit better. My knee isn't completely healed, but I feel I can continue. In my second kumite round, my opponent is bouncing in an attempt to throw me off. I give the first strike. We continue bobbing and I followed up with a combination of punches. So then I got two points. This time I go aggressively into my round with some high kicks and I receive three points. I let my opponent bob around and I wait calmly because I know I'm leading the bout at this point. I gave my opponent a kick and received two points. I'm very exhausted at this point. I knew that I still have one more round to get the gold medal. So after my second bout, my instructor comes to me and tells me to use my hands more than my legs. At this moment, I'm in a lot of pain, but I still want to continue because I can feel the gold medal in my reach. I start my first round with a punch. So she eventually got angry, pulled my arm and hit me to the face. As a result, my nose started to bleed. The referee then called off the fight immediately and the paramedic came to help me. It was quite painful. I was forced to the sidelines while the medic continued to treat me. My senses were also helping and were concerned and supportive. The blow she landed was not a legal move. You are penalized when you make contact to the face. Basically what happened in Chloe's final bout was um, her opponent punched her to the face and uh, the severity of the injury caused her not to be able to continue. And as a result, the injury was uh, severe and the contestant was awarded a Category 1 penalty of Hansuku, thus being disqualified and automatic uh, a win to, to Chloe Rodgers for, for the injury caused to her. So you see guys, karate is a sport about self-control and should only be practiced for self-defense. So on the day, I won double gold for my kata and my three round kumite. I'm very happy about the result despite the injury to my face. I also got a knee injury which I'm hoping will heal so that I can get back to the dojo and continue my training for the next event. So it's been a very tough day on the tatami for Chloe. Despite the unfortunate injuries, Chloe still managed to secure a double gold in the kata and kumite rounds. She's still a bit young though, but Chloe is well on her way to representing South Africa at the Olympics. We'll see you there, Chloe. Tune in next week when we meet two new accelerators and see how they're going to prepare for their extreme events. Don't miss out. In the meantime, check out our Facebook page for more news and views.